Uh, today, I am going to be reviewing a product that I've been wanting to try forever. Um, let's get it out here. This is, can you see it okay? I'm trying to get it over there. This is May Mary Puro, okay? Oil color made in Italy. And this is classified as a tier one oil paint, which basically the best you can get. Tier one, there's like Williamsburg have made, um, the May Mary Puro, Old Holland. There's a couple other ones that are really less known, but are, you know, really top notch, but it's, you know, there's only several paints in this category. And I was always hesitant because they're very expensive. Um, this is a 40 ML tube, and this particular one is uh, $24. And then their least expensive one for a 40 ml is um, 18 and change. The most expensive one I saw, I believe, was Cerulean Sky Blue, which is like $94, $98, something like that. Anyways, why would you spend so much money on oil paint when you can buy Artist Brand that I've been using for a long time that is also light, fast, and everything else? And up until yesterday, when I tried these for the first time, I really didn't know. Um, now I understand. Now I get it. So I'm going to go over a couple of characteristics with them, and then we're going to do a painting demonstration on the 9x12. First characteristic is um, a little goes a long way. Okay, and I'm not exaggerating. Exaggerating. For lower brand, still artist quality professional paint, it takes two, three, and four times that amount of paint for the same coverage of these May Marys that I found out, the Puros. The colors are just incredible as far as clean and deep and bright and beautiful. And it's real easy to work with. I did a painting yesterday and I didn't use any medium. They came out of the tube so creamy and smooth. And I'm gonna try it today. I'm gonna see if I can do it again today with no medium and just see how that works. Um, so far, and this will be my second painting ever with them, um, and the reason I didn't do it the first time on video is because I had no idea what to expect of what I was doing. So I didn't want to, you know, have it look really stupid on, um, on a video on YouTube. So I wanted to get at least one painting under my belt. And actually, it's not dry yet, which is what I'm going to have to get used to. But this is the painting I did yesterday with the May Mary Puros. And... I barely squeeze anything out of the tube to cover this 9x12. Now granted, 9x12 isn't huge, but if you're gonna use a lot less paint to cover the same as less expensive paint, then all of a sudden it's not that ridiculous of a price anymore. You know, the Cerulean Sky Blue, I don't know if it's worth 100 bucks. I may get that color one day, I may not, I don't know. But if you're paying 18, 24, or $35 for a tube of paint, and it takes you four other tubes, <clears throat> excuse me, of lesser brand, or I should say lesser tier artist oil colors to cover the same ground. What are you saving? And that's what I wanted to try and kind of prove. So without further ado, take my Filbert brush and, and May Mary at least through uh, Jerry's where I got them. They have a, how many colors are there? They have these little tubes here, okay? And there's like five of them, I think. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Five tubes for like $36. And then I bought three colors in the regular 40 ml that I wanted. So I paid $96 with tax, shipping over 59 for Jerry's and Blick are free. So it was 96 and change with tax and everything else. And that gives me a ton of paintings to see if I really like them or not. Okay, so I just did it with no uh, medium. They're Ultramarine Deep, I believe that is, that they sent. 
and it just goes on. It just, look at the coverage. And that's without medium. Okay, with medium, it's gonna go even further. So, I'm starting to really think twice about that whole concept of expensive and not expensive because what I'm looking at for me is it's beautiful oil color it spreads incredible and when you're talking about the money you're gonna save because you don't have to use as much it's kind of silly not to so we'll see like I said, this is my second ever painting. I'm gonna do a little waterfall. Any of you that have watched my videos and seen my website know that I love waterfalls. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this a little more painterly. Got this rich, deep, thick, creamy paint, and I'm gonna leave some brush marks in there. Smooth right there. But I'm leaving a lot of, when I uh, edit this video, I'm gonna kind of crop it in a little bit so you'll be able to see this a little bit better okay so I've got that done and I need something really dark I did uh, make a new purchase of these uh, last night after I got done because I liked them so much so I'm going to uh, I bought some more colors to see what they look like Okay, so just for the hell of it, we'll put a waterfall right here. And this is just a mixture of red and the ultramarine blue and a little bit of red ochre and then uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of uh, green earth just to kind of get that real dark. And then we'll just put the water in. funny too because I've been painting for a long time I've been selling my paintings for a long time this year's a little slow with the economy but I'm still making sales and having fun and everything else and I enjoyed the colors I had and I was using the Windsor Newton Griffin Alkid uh, the biggest reason I was using them they are, are they are an artist brand excuse my stuttering today I don't know what the hell is going on um, they're an artist brand they're light fast they're good paint they look real nice. They dry the next day to the touch. So that is a blessing because I'm not the most patient of painters. But like I said, for the last couple of months, I've been really wanting to see what the hubbub is, I guess you can say, about, you know, the, that tier one, that, you know, old Holland may marry you, you know, that real <clears throat> type of paint. Like I said, so far, it's been better than advertised, and I just am enjoying the heck out of it. Okay, so we go with that. So now we're going to go with some brown here. I'm going to make this just a bunch of rocks. Need something to hold the water in, right? And I still haven't been using medium. And look at the way that's, look how smooth this is. I've never had this before, where the paint just goes on so, I don't know, effortlessly, I guess. And I have no affiliation with May Mary or anybody, actually. Okay, I'm just a guy trying to be a professional artist. And I still have a full-time job because even though I'm selling my paintings, you know, I still don't have, you know, enough volume and uh, name recognition or anything else to even come close to earning a living on my own yet. So I'm not affiliated with anybody. This is just kind of me. I paid for, you know, regular price like you'd pay and everything else. And I am just loving it. So yeah, uh, one of the things that you just notice is I'm putting in ground and I'm using the green earth. And no, the green earth is not brown. I just haven't washed my brush yet. One of the things about landscape painting that I absolutely love, well, there's a lot, but it doesn't matter to a degree what's on your brush. My wife and I are uh, 
members at the Morton Arboretum in Lyle, Illinois. My last video, the one right before this one, um, I did a plein air over there at uh, Crab Apple Lake. It's actually a little pond, but it's really beautiful. But one of the things that you notice when you go to a place like that or forest preserves or almost anything is all the different colors that Mother Nature puts together. And if you look at it, the greens and the browns, the ochres, you know, the earth tones, they just go so well together. And this is a mixture of ultramarine deep, a touch of cad red light, um, green earth, red ochre, and raw sienna. Okay, obviously I put a little bit more green earth in as we went, but those colors you find in nature constantly in the spring and summer, especially in the summer. You know, if it doesn't rain quite a lot this week or whatever, you're gonna see a bit more brownish. And yes, I'm taking this right into the water because I want some of it in the water. Because one of the things about water, as we all know, it reflects its surroundings. Not just the surroundings on the sides, but what's underneath it too, depending on the depth. So where I live in the Midwest, you know, we have beautiful water that looks brown. It looks dirty. It looks, you know, like, ugh. And I thought that once when I was a kid. And my dad took a clear jar and just dumped it in, picked it up and held the jar up and you see right through it. It was clear. It's like, that's clean water? And he said, yep. And he, that's what he, I learned. He told me, you know, the silt on the bottom is why it turns brown. And then the dirt on the banks where like in the North Pacific Northwest, you know, a lot of these rivers and streams are completely embedded with rock and they have the clear blue skies and they have a lot of green around them. That's why they're so blue because they reflect and they clean so well. So anyways, enough of that. So, um, you know, I'm just going to put in a little bit of trees. I'm not going to go crazy with anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some trees in here. And this is my ultramarine and um, green earth. The ultramarine is a good color for distance. Well, blue in general is a good distance color. Then I might put some you know, highlights in the front somewhere. to uh, show some trees in the front. And this is just my same brush I've been using for everything today. I try not to use, one of the things I learned when I was first starting out painting, I used to use every brush and every tube of paint known to man. And um, as I got into it, I finally figured out that wasn't all that necessary. So there are some paintings where I'll use a bunch of different brushes this one I still make. But as of right now, everything I'm painting it isn't needed. Okay. So we've got our base. We're pretty good with that. So at this time, I'm actually going to clean the brush for the first time. If my face is in the way, I apologize, but the way everything's set up, I have to reach over. I haven't had a found a perfect setup yet for doing my oil painting videos I'm still trying so if I get in the way I apologize I try to edit that part out as much as I can so we'll see how it goes okay so the next thing I want to do put the rag there okay now I'm gonna get a little bit of highlights down here and what I'm gonna do with that is I'm just gonna use a little palette knife Yep, put it up this way because with the light you see better and then I'm going to use a little bit of white and yellow ochre I'm going to use the white just to brighten the yellow ochre up just a little bit I'm just going to be putting in a little bit of I don't want it too much just enough to show light playing with it Bit 
on this side. There we go. Okay, now I'm not gonna leave it just like that, but it gives me a really nice highlight base for what I'm looking for. So what I'll do is I'll take my next brush, which is the fan. Okay. Now, I want these to show up in the back, so I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to that dark mixture that I had here. I'm gonna put this at the top of these rocks. Also, just brush that in at the bottom. I'll make it a little darker. Nope, not dark enough. A little bit more blue in there. Still not dark enough. Come on, John. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I want the dark to go up against the really bright highlight. There we go. Now I'll get more yellow up here a little bit. do is this brush I'm going to be using with those colors so I'm not even going to clean it I'm not even going to wipe it I'll take a smaller fan brush one that I've abused tremendously as you can tell by the bristles but if you use up uh, a bristle brush real good and a filbert turns into a flat or this turns into something raggedy save them they're awesome for foliage okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that smooth at the bottom there we go. Now, the next thing I want to do, I think I'm going to put the water in first. Once I get the water in, then um, I think the rest will follow real good. So I'm using thick paint. So might as well use a thick brush. So I'm going to use a one inch. And as you notice, I'm starting to use more brushes now. So to a degree, do as I say, not as I do. This is the third brush. Okay, so grab some white. Just, whoa. Always look out for those stray bristles because that'll mess up a painting area in a heartbeat. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. See, it's coming on too thick. It's not realistic. But that's okay. I'm going to show you why it's okay in a minute. Okay. That's what I'll probably use again, so I'll leave that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a two inch bristle brush. Dry, I haven't used it yet, may not use it again. A lot of the action over here is cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it very lightly, go horizontal and thin it out and kind of move the water lines where I want, kind of position and manipulate them. So it's gonna be very gentle in some areas and not so gentle in others. Now I'm getting the movement of the water. See how you're just dispersing it? I'm gonna take the side, because this is the part. There you go, that's the part I didn't like the most. There we go. Okay, 
now what I'm gonna do with the same brush, I want more blue in there. All my little whites in there got all kinds of stuff so now what I'm gonna do so I've got my water lines where they need to be I've got all that so now I'm just gonna make the actual movement of the water so I'm gonna put a little bit more here because that's right where the falls are it's gonna follow the path pretty good path meaning this way isn't in the way again. Let's see if I can bring this closer without getting in the way. Let me see, is that in the way? No, can't see it at all. Okay. So, get that part done. And I'll take a two inch brush one more time. I've got a lot of blue on it, so I'm gonna wipe the blue off. Not gonna wash it yet, just wipe it off. And then I'll have to go one more time. There we go. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. I will wash this brush after this session. I'm sure you don't wanna watch a video with somebody just washing brushes. Maybe you do, to learn how to do it if you've never done it before. So if I'm speaking for you, I apologize. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bit more trees back here. Not a lot, but just a little bit greener now. It's a little bit of yellow. And I'm gonna use my one inch bristle brush just to put stuff in the foreground. Basically what I'm trying to do is get a couple of different levels. Okay, you see the faint stuff in the back? Now you got these in the front. Adding a little bit more green itself, and a little bit more blue. To darken just a little bit, I don't want it too bright. But I do want them richer. I want a little more depth of color. And then, it'll show up really good. There we go. Put that a little higher. You still see some in the background. Okay. So now, I'm gonna take some more of that carve in right here. I want this waterfall to look like it's just coming out of nowhere. Okay, so now a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so that top part is done pretty good. A couple more areas right here where it's darker. A lot of what painting is, is as you're doing it, you see what you like, what you don't like, what you want to adjust, what's good just the way it is. It's always a constant looking at it until you get there. One of the uh, 
great artist that I used to watch all the time, still do, Jerry Arnell used to always say, don't pitter paddle or play or whatever, something to those effects. And he's right. Um, you got to check it out. You got to look, you got to make your adjustments as you go, but you don't want to do it to the point where that's all it is and it's too much. You just don't want to go there. Eventually, you just got to say, cool, it's done. Okay, so. We are going to add a little bit more blue onto the, the palette. Take our big two inch brush and we're going to go straight into the blue. Want this straight up and dark. basically making the reeds that will hold flowers. There we go. Now, next thing I'll do, a little bit of yellow along with that. Make the grass. tap on the side of this basically it's a gesso brush it's a bristle gesso brush that I got a blick I tell you what I still haven't used a lot of paint and this covers incredibly well there we go okay so the next thing I do Do, I'm not going to clean it off, but I'll wipe it off. Still going to have some color on here. So it looks like I've used a total of four brushes. I think I'm done with the brushes. Okay, so now I'm going to take some CAD Red Light by itself. And I'm barely touching. Just tapping on. It looks like I'm hitting it hard, but I'm really not. Okay. Now, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you introduce colors in different places. It's basically, what I mean is if you can use it one place, put it somewhere else, too. You want to get what they call color harmony. So you don't have to use it all over the place, but this is, looks like there's little red flowers all over the place. So just put a couple little bits here and there. Nothing crazy the further away you get. Just little hints, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do, go right into the yellow. It's going to make a nice orange. A little bit more. There we go. Basically, this is the wildflowers. And again, put a little bit of it in different places. Just so you get that little bit of color harmony. There we go. Okay, and I believe we're gonna call this painting done. Um, this is the second time I'm using the May Marys. I can't believe how bright the colors are. I'm gonna have to actually start using the compliments to tone them down a little bit because right out of the tube and straight mixes like yellow and um, blue or yellow and red, whatever the case may be, they're very, very powerful. So I'm gonna have to subdue those uh, a little bit to get a little bit not quite where you need sunglasses to view the painting other than that and getting used to the brightness of the colors I absolutely love this paint um, it goes on like I have not used any medium for this entire painting okay and that's how smooth and creamy it was it just came right out like no problem so my honest opinion is I'm going to keep buying these. Um, I'm going to keep painting with them. 
I'm going to learn how to subdue the colors a little bit so it's not, like I said, in your face as bad as it is right now. Um, it still looks good in my opinion, but it's extremely, extremely bright. And one of the reasons why I wanted to try these is because my other paintings were a lot, they dried duller. And even when I was done painting, they were, it's like I had to keep putting more pigment on to brighten it up. Where this one, I'm going to have to neutralize the pigment to tone it down a little bit and find that nice little sweet spot. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that bell. I'm usually pretty good with every Sunday night uh, or right in that area doing a um, video of some sort. Hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you later.